What's good, YouTube? This is your boy Carlson Irvin. I'm coming with another video on the Broad Street Bullies Fantasy Football Channel. So basically, this video is about what I have noticed during draft season. Last week it was crazy. Bunch of drafts, um, drafts in some of my pay leagues, drafts in some free leagues and stuff like that. So here's what I noticed um, during draft season. Um, number one, you got people that it seemed like they ain't do no research and if you did any research or you see people um like you you see people drafting players that you don't even think should be drafted at that position but at the end of the day it's to each his own but one thing i really really noticed is um them qbs are going fast and i've said this in a couple of my videos regarding you know early qb I think a lot of people are now on the early QB wave, and it's not because, like, yeah, you do have them people that will go, like, robust RB and everything like that, um, and that's cool and everything, but one thing about these QBs are they're, they're game breakers, and the way the game is played to protect the offenses and protect the quarterbacks more, these quarterbacks are durable. Like, yeah, you will have some QBs that get, that get injured, but for the most part, QBs will play, like, they, they play longer than most average positions. Like, in the NFL. Like, you can expect your QB to at least get you 13 solid games, 14 solid games, you know, as long as they're not being reckless out there, especially for rushing QBs. Now, we know rushing QBs get tend to get injured a little more, but the game is designed to protect the QBs, and most people are like literally um drafting these qbs every i've seen um i've seen um and you know i'm not even gonna say the top tier qbs i seen in the draft i had a pay league draft that i commissioned it was a little 25 dollar buy-in league um but somebody drafted joe burrow with the fourth pick so people are on qbs i wouldn't have drafted joe burrow with the fourth but people are are on QBs because they are the game breakers, especially the high rushing upside QBs like the Josh Allen's, the Justin Fields, um, the Jalen Hurts, um, even Patrick Mahomes. He's not a really high upside rushing QB, but he's a QB that can get you, uh, uh, like he, he can break a game for you. Like what we've seen last year <clears throat> was that these QBs man they they can affect the game in so many ways like they affect the game in so many ways like a qb can have like for instance let's say lamar jackson had a bad game passing the ball let's say he went 11 for 24 and he only had 160 yards no touchdowns but on the flip side of that the baltimore ravens probably still won that game because he had nine, ten carries on the ground that netted two, two touchdowns rushing. Like th this is like understated. Like, cause I think people think of these. Like, my mindset is, and this is why I don't mind drafting. Like, if if I gotta go early QB, th this is why I don't mind it. Because with the QBs, especially the high rushing upside ones, like the, the Justin Fields. Now, if you don't go early QB, depending on the size of your league, maybe you can get him, maybe you can get him uh, maybe in the third round. But even he's, like I've seen him go in a couple drafts that I've did, he's went first round. It's cool to have ADP and stuff like that and have your rankings, but understand whether you're drafting against randoms or people you know, people are gonna get the players that they want. So it's like when I say in a, in a previous video, like get the players you want. Don't be afraid, like yes, like if you're, like like I've been playing for 21 years. So I know I have a sense and feel of the draft board already. Like I kind of know based on how people are drafting, like players, like, like I have a player I'm targeting in the first round and if i'm pretty sure I, I might get them or is a good chance you start going to like in my mind i'm going further into the second round like i might want that player in the second round 
like what's going to happen like be, these players are like these drafters they're not they not like there's no foul like no it's you know how many channels there are out there in fantasy football that influence the masses in the way that they draft so it's like you have to really get the players you want because these qbs are going fast so and like i was saying i don't mind drafting early qb because i don't see it as one position and i think a lot of people are not a lot of people are starting to see it that way too like the qb especially if you get a high upside russian qb or even even just a qb that provides you know some russian aspect to his game or something uh or we'll get like goal line looks you know qb draws qb sneaks or Q, qb bootlegs whatever like these these qbs in my opinion there are two positions in once in one in a new nfl right now you have to be able to do at least two things as a player that's why years ago debo samuel was so valuable because he can get you rushing touchdowns and rushing yards, but also get you catches and receiving touchdowns. That's why he came off that number one. You know, when he was he, you if you drafted him in the tenth round, he was a league winner, and I got that experience with him because I, I I was one of the people that people were sleeping on, and I drafted him in in a um, in a uh, what you call it, late round tenth, ninth, tenth, eleventh round. And he was he was one of my sleepers, led me to a championship. I ain't win the chip that year, but he led me to the championship. Like he was dominant. <laughs> so, like what I'm seeing from these drafts is first of all, QBs are going like extremely earlier. Like they, they're going early. People are not like afraid to take QBs. Um wide receivers, like the top like Amon Ra St. Brown, he is a top wide receiver. Um that is like if uh, Amon Ron barely makes it to the second round. I've seen him go second round. I've even seen him go third round, depending on the type of structure of your league. Like if you got an IDP league or a deep league, depending on the structure, he might go at least third. I haven't seen him go past the third round. Maybe, and maybe I'll look at my uh my, my draft boards and see what's happening. But he has not gone gone past the third round. Like. Amon Ra St. Brown and even even with me, he's like one of my targets. If I have a good draft pick, you know, if if I can't go early QB or if I can't go rob well, I don't really care for the robust RB strategy. It's not really how I draft. I tend to want to draft a, a well balanced team. So like even, you know, if even the way my teams might look, it, it can go anywhere between a, a top running back. Like the, the first three rounds are your most important rounds after the third round is is basically about strategy research and what you know and who who knows more but like the first three rounds like i don't like and you can't lock yourself into certain strategies like it depends on how you draft and everything like that but um the first three rounds are the key they're, they're the key like you can either get a top flight qb you you can get a top flight wide receiver you can get two flop top flight running backs or wide receivers but me personally uh i like to have the balance because if you get if you go robust rb um if you go robust rb and you have top flight running backs like say like you in the 12 team league you get um saquon and let's say by chance you get nick chubb Saquon and Nick Chubb, you set on running backs. Assumingly, you're set on running backs if you're basing it off of these guys are baller. You never know what happens to fancy. But assumingly like that, you're set on running backs for the year. But you leave yourself wide open for you don't have a good tight end or you, you don't have, you know, one of them dynamic QBs or you don't have dynamic wide receivers. Like, you have to have the positional advantage when it comes to fantasy football so like i think in my opinion the best strategy you can have is to be balanced like yeah in some leagues and look i have experimented like in my free leagues i do more of the experimenting and in the pay leagues i kind of stick to i kind of stick to how, how would i say it? i, I kind of stick to a more simple strategy in my pay leagues like my pay leagues my teams would be more balanced 
I like getting, at least in the first three rounds, I like to get positional advantages in three different positions. So if, like, you know, um, I can go wide receiver, um, I, I will either go wide receiver, running back, or QB, or it can be flipped. It can be, you know, tight end. If you get, you, you might, maybe you want to take Chuck Kelsey. Kelsey, you know, he's considered, I don't consider him a tight end. He's considered a receiver. So, you know, he's like a receiver, basically. But you want to go tight end, you want to go QB second, or then you want to go back in the third round and get one of those running backs. And one thing else, another thing I noticed, um, more people are just waiting on running backs. It's not that they're abandoning the position, but the the values in running backs depending on um depending on uh your league size like if you got a 16 team league the best value in running backs is probably like the third fourth round if you're doing a 12 team league the best values on running back is the fourth and fifth round you know less picks to go around and stuff like that so with me personally like i'm not like i got a different perspective on this year i do think the early qb strategy is going to win a lot of people different leagues but um my perspective is you can wait on running backs it don't mean totally neglect the position like guys like damian pierce who's going to be uh and i i wouldn't say a workhorse for houston but he's going to be a uh 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 what is it uh a very important piece to Houston's offense. You can wait on guys like him. Um, Kenneth Walker, who people are, I don't think they're completely down on him, but people are wary of him because of Zach Charbonnet. You can wait on him. These are fourth, these are like fourth to fifth round guys and in, in uh I would say in, in a 12 team league. Or, you know, um if you're in the 16 league, but I say you can get these guys by like the third or fourth round instead of fourth and fifth round. Sometimes you can even get these guys in the sixth round, depending on what type of league you're in. I notice, like, if you do IDP leagues, a lot of people start drafting their IDP leagues, you know, their IDP players a little earlier. And I love when people do that because I do IDP leagues. And IDPs, I said, I said before, they are interchangeable. Like, IDP players get injured. It can be loss of production. Everything can happen. Like, it's so many defensive players that that to go around in the NFL. So it's like if you draft an IDP player like early, I don't get it because personally, you're going to be switching them players out all year anyway. Unless it's a strict like unless it's like a really a dominant IDP league with like eight nine IDP spots and only a couple of it, I get it. But at the same time, like um these like running backs like. I think you could get good value of certain running backs. Now they're not the the safe ones. Like you can, you know, target guys like J.K. Dobbins. You know, a lot of it's, J.K. Dobbins is not a sexy pick, and I do have him in one of my leagues that I drafted. Um, in one of my uh, pay leagues I drafted, uh, I had J J.K. Dobbins and James Cook. J.K. Dobbins, I was considered my risk riskiest pick. Um, and I've acknowledged that, but I want to bank on his upside. Possibly, hopefully he's fully healthy. If he's fully healthy and he's ready to go, he's going to be a dominant pick for me. Um, hopefully, and it depends on how that Ravens offense look as well. Uh, you can get guys like James Cook. You can get guys like Miles Sanders. And look, Miles Sanders, I'm not really high on Miles Sanders. Um, I do think he'll be solid for Carolina, but I don't expect him to be like people expect him to be Philadelphia Eagles, Miles Sanders last year. And I don't expect that. So you have to understand these players with different expectations. Like you can't judge them based on last year. The situations change. Carolina, do I think they're going to be a dominant team? No. Do I think they're going to be like a great team? No. I do think they're going to be an okay team, okay to average team. Like a good a good record for them this year would be like 7-10. and 10. And then they work off of what they build. And I do think they have some pieces. Carolina is not like a sexy fantasy offense. <laughs> Carolina is not a sexy fantasy offense that I'm targeting. But they do got some pieces that you could possibly, you know, have is like uh, Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen's one of them pieces. Um, Miles Sanders can be usable. Hayden Hurst can be usable. But 
the thing about Carolina is one of them receivers have to step up. So it's like and in the late rounds, the Jonathan Mingos, the, the uh, Terrace Marshalls, um, uh, I think they have LaVisca Chenault over there too. One of these receivers have to step up. I mean, I don't know which one it's going to be. Um, if I put my money on it, I, I would say Terrace Marshall. A lot of people like Jonathan Mingo, but I, I would say Terrace Marshall. Um, but, yeah, so running backs is one of those things like you – like, and if – some people don't like waiting on running backs, and I get it. Like, I, I definitely get it that you don't like waiting on running backs. You get yours early. But, like, for the experienced drafters that look at things like myself for, from a different perspective, if you get a high rushing upside QB, let's say you go wide receiver. You didn't draft a QB in the first round, but let's say you go wide receiver. You go Amon Ryan St. Brown first, and then the second round, you want one of them high rushing upside QBs. Uh, let's say maybe uh, Patrick has been taken because I've seen Patrick Mahomes go in the first round uh, in a couple of drafts this year. Uh, or the second round, but let's say in the second round you get somebody like a Jalen Hurts. Okay, cool. You got a minus Jalen Hurts, and then you can also come back. You you might not get Kelsey, but one thing I have seen so far in my drafts, and I have capitalized. People, T.J. Hawkinson's sweet spot is the third round. In the third round, you have to make a decision, and your decision will be to get a quality starting running back or another quality starting wide receiver or get a quality starting tight end. TJ Hawkinson is one of those tight ends that I think he's the only tight end I believe that has a chance of being a number one tight end in the NFL this year from a fantasy football perspective. So yeah. But I, I just had to vent, man. I, I just had to vent a little bit. Uh, I definitely had to vent a little bit about the things I noticed um, in some drafts. And I'll get, like, you know, I'm going to put more videos up. I'm going uh, to screen record some videos um, of what you call it, uh, of my drafts. So you can see what I mean. And I'll get really in depth to it. Because I, I got, like, so many drafts I did this weekend that I want to go over. And, um... I am going to make more videos. Yes, I will. Um, I've been taking a little break for a little second. Some stuff done happened, but uh, I'm, I'm going to make more videos and I'm going to get really in depth and I'm going to show y'all like some of my drafts. I don't want y'all to think I'm out here like not like drafting well or something like, no, nah, man. I mean, everybody's opinion is to each his own on who drafts, but I'm going to show y'all some of my drafts. So I'm out. More videos coming. Peace.